Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. Have you ever wondered if it is possible in ASP.NET Core to actually use controllers from a different assembly? Like maybe to define controllers in a totally different project and just use those controllers in your ASP.NET Core application? Well, I can tell you that it is possible and in this video I'm going to show you how this actually works and how can we make it possible. But I will also show you an application that I'm working on right now where I really need this approach very, very badly so that you can also get a sense of why this actually might be useful. Stay tuned because we will dive right into it. What I have here is a very, very basic setup and I have virtually two projects. Like the first project, which is this application parts, it is a regular API. And we can look at this program.cs, we see that it has really all the methods or all the registrations that we have in the default template when we create a new ASP.NET Core Web API, like the services add controllers, add endpoints API explorer, and add swagger gen. And then of course we build the application and all the middleware and stuff. But you notice here that the controllers folder is actually totally missing. So I don't really have a controller right now in my application. But if we go to this other project that we have here, which is a standard .NET class library, we see that here we have this weather forecast, which is the model. And here we have this folder called controllers. And we have this weather forecast controller, which is actually the exact weather forecast controller that we have in the regular ASP.NET Core template but I have moved it here in this other project. Now, of course, when we build this application, this new project will actually become a new DLL file. So essentially it is a new assembly. Now, the core idea is, is there a way that we can go here in this program.cs of this API and kind of like tell it, please look for controllers also in the other assembly that you have here. And actually, it's very easy to set up. And of course, it's possible. The only thing that you have to do is to come here to this method with builder services add controllers. And what you can do here is simply add another thing, which is add application part. Now, adding application part in ASP.NET Core is the underlying feature that, that actually supports us bringing ASP.NET Core, I will call them generically components from a different library from a different assembly into the current ASP.NET Core project. And when I say, well, components is because I think about controllers, but this is not limited to controllers. If you have a regular MVC application, you can have views basically defined in different assemblies and using the, this add application part can help you also add views or use views from a different assembly. This kind of like is very, very powerful because when you have large ASP.NET Core applications, they could be either APIs or regular MVC applications. You might have, for instance, a lot of different views. Now, having everything in one single project might become a little bit tricky because it will be then hard to find things there. And maybe you want to split and have the views maybe in dedicated projects, or you would like to create a dedicated project that only contains views and the corresponding controllers or things similar to that. So using this application part idea in ASP.NET Core, helps you to achieve this and load basically everything that's ASP.NET Core from a different assembly into the current ASP.NET Core project. Now, the only thing that we need to provide here in order for this to work is actually to specify the assembly in which it should look for those specific ASP.NET Core elements. And to do this, I will use an approach that's actually similar to also what Automapper and Mediator uses. And I will have here a type of, and I will just say weather uh, forecast, but have to also type the model correctly. That should be something like this. And here I can reference the other project. And uh, yeah, now I have the weather forecast, but then on this one, we say that we want to get the assembly on which this type actually resides. And just like this, basically, right now we have instructed ASP.NET Core to actually look for ASP.NET Core application parts in this other assembly. And now if we run this application, it will just take a few seconds to build and it will run the API. And we will just take a look to see exactly what happens and if that API is actually usable. Because we have this one controller 
that provides us with a weather forecast. And now it is just loading on the other screen. And now we can see it here. And already from this swagger page, you can tell that, hey, even if we don't have any controller, look here, we don't have any controller in this application. ASP.NET Core knows that, hey, we have a weather forecast controller because it has added the controller as an application part. And therefore, Swagger Gen was able to actually, uh, well, find out that we have this controller and then actually provide us with all that we need to actually try it out. And if we execute this, we will see that we get, we get the response. Even though, once again, I want to emphasize this, our ASP.NET Core project is totally clean. So we don't have anything here besides this program.cs class and everything else in our case is in this weather forecast module. And that's quite cool and that, that kind of like allows us or, or opens us the door for a lot of very interesting scenarios where we might want to split functionality from just one ASP.NET Core project, maybe into different uh, other such projects. However, before we get into, well, a more concrete example of an application that I'm currently developing and in which I heavily use this approach with the application parts, I would like to also maybe show you something else because the thing is here that, hey, you come here in this builder services and in add controllers, you need to say, okay, add application parts. And then you have to kind of like define the type. And if you have several such assemblies, well, this could be a little, well, or this could become a little bit trickier. And the thing is that this would assume that here in your ASP.NET Core application, which in this case, it's just a host application. So it's just hosting. It just provides a hosting infrastructure and that's all. Now, it means that that host would have to know exactly what they should register, how they should register things, and so on and so forth. Now, the other thing that we can do here and that makes things much, much, much cleaner is, for instance, in this weather forecast module, let's create a new class and uh, let's call it a web application builder extensions. And here we will create an extension method. Okay, we have to just close this application uh, and we'll make this to be static because we want to create an extension method there and we want to actually create an extension method for the iService collection. So what we can do here is we can say public uh, static void add weather uh, forecast module and then since we want this to be an extension method, it would be on the I service collection services. And that would be it. Now we can come here in this program and we can just actually take this away. Like for instance, we take this here, we move this into this application that we have here, but it's the only thing it's not on the builder. It's just uh, on the services. It should be like that. So here we just add controllers and we add the application part and we say that we should look well in the assembly in which we are currently right now. So it means that theoretically we can go now back to our program and we can safely remove this part here. And instead of having this, what we want to do is simply go here and say builder.services. But I have to also type it correctly, of course, add weather uh, forecast module, you see? And then that's it. The entire logic for what exactly adding that weather forecast module means, we have moved here in the module itself in this extension method. And here you can think about, because you can here, for instance, uh, well, add different other services that you need only for this specific module. So you, you can then custom or use custom services that are kind of like only responsible for this specific module and everything can be registered here. So the host application doesn't really need to know and doesn't really need to care about what other modules are doing. It is just a host. It just provides an ASP.NET Core hosting environment for other assemblies that kind of like need that. So let's run the application once again, because I just want to prove that it works. And afterward, we will jump over to show you an application that I'm currently working on. It's still kind of like pretty much an application in its starting phases, but I guess we can already see there exactly why this approach could be very, very helpful. So we have this weather forecast module. Let's try here and we do a get and we get the response. So everything is working, but right now all the registrations are done basically in this extension method 
in the module itself. Cool. Now, this is how we can implement this, or this is how we can use application parts to actually use ASP.NET Core elements from a different assembly in a current ASP.NET Core project. Now, I would like to go to the second part of this video and show you an application that I am working on in which I heavily rely on this feature and also have a look on why I do rely on this feature. So here we are in this Warble application that's kind of like a social network, Twitter-like social network that I would like to kind of organize or create as a modular monolith. Now, on this concept of modular monolith, I will do other videos in which I, I will explain in depth how this works and to why this is useful. But for now, I just want to briefly present you what this actually is all about. Because in this idea of modular monolith, what I would like to do is actually to split the functionality of this, uh, well, social network in distinct modules that are self-contained and independent one from the other. And therefore, I was thinking about the functionalities that I want to have in my application and I will have a functionality for lists, which be kind of like a list of, uh, well, uh, warbles, we will call them warbles here, or different type of activities that might happen on the social network. We then have a module for messaging, which will be kind of like the module responsible for direct messages between different users, and maybe also uh, group chats or something like that. We have this profiles module, which contains basically all the user profile functionality, like when you register a profile, editing the profile, all the profile information and things like that. We have this shared in which we'll kind of like, uh, well, probably use some shared functionality. Like if we, if we, if we need to create our, let's say, custom data types that we want to use throughout all the application and all the modules, uh, that's the place where we will put that. And then we have this warbles module, which is actually the module uh, around tweets because that the, a warble is similar to a tweet. Now you can just simply, well, create a warble and send it and somebody will see it in their newsfeed. So that, that will happen here probably in, in the warbles. Now, the idea is that I, as I want to have all these modules self-contained, isolated and totally independent one from the other, I needed a way to actually, uh, well, create everything around those modules in the module themselves. So. If we take a look here in this program.cs, what we have here, the controllers folder is empty, by the way. And actually what we do here is we call this configure profiles module, which is an extension matter from the profiles module. Now in the module itself for the profiles, I have organized the code, of course, in different layers. Like once again, each module is actually in the end an application on itself with its own domain, with its own uh, data access, its own infrastructure and its own application layer and its own API for that matter. And in this API, even if I call this API, that's actually a regular .NET Core library. And uh, well, but in that library, we define controller, we define filters. We even have this profile module settings.json file where we want to define the settings that are specific only for this module. Now, this module, as we see it right now, is kind of like self-contained but it doesn't really have a way to run itself. So we don't have a host. And therefore I have this idea of the host. And the host just provides once again, the ASP.NET Core hosting for the different modules. But then all the modules will be responsible to actually uh, do everything by themselves and register the, con the, the controllers, the filters, and all the other functionality and services that might be needed. So what I do here is I have, for instance, in this uh, API, we have these extensions and we have this web application builder extensions. And let's take a look at about what we are doing here. So this is the extension method that we call basically on the host. And then we pass in this web application builder because it's an extension method on the web application builder. So what we do here is, first of all, we configure the controllers. What we do here is, similarly to what we have done uh, previously is, yeah, first of all, we get the assembly in which we are currently in. And then what we want is, okay, we want to add controllers. Uh, for the controllers, we want to add a filter because we have this test action filter that I have created. And we have here add application part, like exactly like we had it uh, previously. So in this case, we configure the host to look in this assembly for all the controllers, for filters, and for, for other ASP.NET Core related stuff. Then the second, Thing that we do actually here is configure module file provider and settings files. 
Now we need this because once again, each, each module should be self-contained. I don't want to use the app settings file, app settings .json file on the host to actually provide the settings for all the modules, but each module should contain the settings that it needs. And that's why I have this profile modules uh, settings.json and I have to register this, of course, with ASP.NET Core or with the host. And to do that, what I need to do is actually I need to create a new file provider. And using this file provider, I can then add the JSON file. And I add the JSON file that I need. And therefore, ASP.NET Core, it will look into this or the host will actually, well, we will run this method on the host builder, basically. And this means that uh, when the application starts up, it will also look for this profile module settings.json file that's actually in this module. And then we have, last but not least, this configure database, because we need to configure the database separately, because each module which will have it, its own connection string probably will use the same database, but with a different schema, but that's a totally different story. The idea is that we add for each module, the database or add DB context or add the specific or module specific DB context that we need for that specific module. So this means that basically calling this configure profile modules on this host will actually configure my entire profiles module with everything that it needs, with the controllers, filters, services, DB context, uh, uh, file providers, settings, configuration settings, and so on and so forth. So this is kind of like very, very powerful. And from my point of view, this feature is, well, a foundational part of what it means to create, um, uh, to create modular monoliths, which I think is a very, very interesting architectural pattern uh, for most of the applications that we might create. So that's kind of like it. We have discussed in this video exactly how we can uh, actually use controllers and other ASP.NET Core elements in an ASP.NET Core application, but from a different assembly uh, using this add application parts feature. But then we have also looked into an application that I'm currently developing and in which I, or which I want to structure as a modular monolith. And therefore, this idea of application parts and the ability to add controllers and everything basically from, from, from other assemblies is vital and very important for this entire setup. If you think this content was useful for you, feel free to just subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification bell so that you are always informed and notified whenever something new happens on the Code Wrinkles channel. Also, a thumbs up would be highly appreciated. And if you have any question or you would just like to get a discussion started, hit or go over to the comment section and leave your comment there. And I will be more than happy to get into a discussion with you. Also, if you think that this content might be valuable for others, don't be shy and feel free to share it with your colleagues, with your peers, uh, I don't know, through email, through social network, forums, wherever you think that there might be somebody that would benefit from this content, share it. And I assume that they will be very, very happy for that. This being said, once again, thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.